Shalom Israel. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone and peace and blessings to the elect. It's the brother Yachazak from Great Millstone, Dallas, and I just want to uh add another um uh, addition to the faith files. You know what I'm saying? Um in Romans 15 and 4 it says these things are written for time for our learning. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so that, uh, that we might have hope. You know, you see countless, countless accounts of the Heavenly Father delivering our people. You know what I'm saying? Uh, due to the faith that they had. You know, uh, whether they, whether they, uh, whether they died before the promise was actually uh, delivered, which we still waiting for the promise to be delivered. You know what I'm saying? Still prophecies that have to play out in order for the kingdom uh, to come. You know what I'm saying? But uh, this week I want to uh, uh, focus on the uh, the seven brothers in Maccabees, you know, uh, the faith that they exhibited in that account, you know what I'm saying? It give you goosebumps, it give you chills, it give you all those different feelings, man, you know, it, it, it pretty much stirs up your, 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 your pure mind, you know, to understand how important faith is once you had an understanding. You know, the more you understand, the more your faith is built. You know? Now, this is uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verses uh, 38 and 39. It says, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. You know? It said, But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. You see? And that's a huge, that's a heavy statement. You know, the Lord ain't having the Lord ain't gonna have pleasure in a man that don't have faith, man. It just don't work like that. Here it is, the most high is the most powerful entity, and he on your side, but you don't got faith. You know what I'm saying? And that's why Jake fall out. That's why Jake get destroyed, man. Cause that faith, that faith that's a gift given to you, according to Ephesians 8. <laughs> Jake don't accept the gift. You know what I'm saying? You come into this thing, I said, you come into this thing and your faith is strong until something happens. When the scriptures tell you to get ready for temptation, if you come in to serve the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Now, we got Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble is on the horizon. And basically what's going to happen, man, the reason why I'm getting 2nd Ezra, I mean, 2nd uh, Maccabees chapter 7 is because eventually the way they tried to force the pork, force our people to eat pork back in those days uh, under Antiochus, this time they gonna force you to take that microchip, man. You know? All right, let me see. Uh, let me get Jacob's Trouble. That's what I was looking for. Jacob's Trouble. All right. It says, uh, this is Jeremiah 30 and 7. It says, alas, for that day is great so that none, uh, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's Trouble but he shall be saved out of it. So understanding that Jacob's trouble is coming and that all this danger is on the horizon, you know, you know you're going to be saved out of it if you keep the faith. Period, point blank. It's impossible to please the Most High without faith, man. So if you show that faith in that day of, ja of Jacob's trouble, you're going to be saved out of Jacob's trouble, man. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's get, uh, let's get Revelation real quick. Revelation. We'll come back to Hebrews a little later. All right. All right, we got Revelation 13. All right. All right, here we go. This is uh, Revelation 13 and 15. It says, uh, well, I'm going to start at 14, 13, Revelation 13 to 13. It says, and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he, uh, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth, they should not make an image of the beast, which had the wound, uh, by the sword and did live. You know what I'm saying? Going in, uh, going in, uh, uh, Esau and his power structure, 
You know what I'm saying? NATO, the EU, the beast, the beast system. You know what I'm saying? You got the beast system and then you got the mark, which is the chip. You know? It says, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. You see? This is the, this is the prophecy that says that they're going to force the mark of the beast on you. You know? It says, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark. Or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For the num uh, for it is the number of a man. And the number is six hundred three score and six. You see? And I want to use this example in the Maccabees. Uh, you, it'll make more sense once I start to bring it out. You know what I'm saying? But the whole point, the whole point is you're going to have to have faith in abundance in order to not take that chip no matter what. You know? And it's a spirit that the Lord is going to have to put on you to say no to it. You see? All right now, let's go, uh, let's go get the story. All right, 2 Maccabees chapter 7. All right. Second Maccabees chapter 7 verse 1 it says and it, uh, it came to pass that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh or take the chip you know if you correlate it to today when you correlate it to today and were tormented with scourges and whips but one of them that spake first said thus what wouldest thou ask or learn of us we are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of the father you know, and if you take that chip, you're going to be destroyed, man. You know, because you basically saying that Esau is your God over the heavenly father, man. And the Lord don't like that, man. The Lord is a jealous power. You see, it says, uh, then the king being enraged, commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot. You know, so while they're getting the cauldrons hot and, and, and the pans to be uh, get, getting ready to burn this brother. You know what I'm saying? They, they. Esau try to intimidate you with all his different tactics and all this type of stuff. So he figuring, he figuring that they gonna uh, uh, buckle under the pressure eventually, just for the simple fact that uh, uh, what he's ha what he has in store for him. You know, it says which forthwith being heated, he commanded to cut off the tongue of him that spake first, and to cut off the utmost parts of his body, the rest of the br uh, of his brethren and his mother looking on. So he got the cauldrons going. You know, he chopping off body parts, all just because they don't want to eat pork, man. You know, and eating pork was a uh, was a well, it is it is against the law, you know, and they didn't want to transgress the law, period, point blank, because they had more fear for the Most High, more fear of the Most High than they did of their oppressors, man. And this is the attitude that we got to take on, man. You know, Esau can only kill your body; he can't kill your spirit; he can't kill your soul. You see. It says, uh, verse five, it says, now when he was maimed in all his members, he commanded him being yet alive to be brought to the fire and to be fried in the pan. And as the vapor of the pan was for a good space dispersed, they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully saying thus, the Lord God looketh upon us and in truth hath comfort in us as Moses in his song which witness to their faces declared saying and he shall be comforted in his servants you know they understood that it was the bigger picture and plus on top of that the the time period that they was living in under the, uh under the greeks under antiochus it was hell man and they would rather they would rather go back to the spirit world they would rather go back to the spirit world than stay in that hell that they was in man so they held fast to that which was good it says so when the first was dead after this number they brought the second to make him a mocking stock. And when they had pulled off the skin of his head with his hair, they asked him, Wilt thou eat before thou be punished throughout every member of thy body? You know what I'm saying? So they pretty much scalped this brother and asked him, You, you gonna eat this pork? You ready to eat this pork now? You know, correlated to today. You ready? You gonna take this chip? We can, we can continue to inflict pain, man. All you gotta do is take it. All you gotta do is take the chip. All this shit will go away. That's what they say, you know. 
It says, but he answered in his own language and said, no. Wherefore, he also received the next torment in order as the former did. So he took it, man. He took it. And when he was at the last gasp, he said, thou like a fury takest us out of this present life. But the king of the world shall raise us up who have died for his uh, who have died for his laws unto everlasting life, man. You see, we die, I was say they they was willing to die for righteousness sake, man. No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to eat this pork. We're not going to take this chip. No, it's just not going to happen. You know, do what you got to do, man. But the Lord is going to look out for us, man. They understood that, man. Here it is. Here it is. They all about to die. Yet they focused on everlasting life. That's a that's some heavy faith, man. That's some heavy faith, man. It says after him, the third was made a mocking stock. And when he was required, he put out his tongue and that right soon holding forth his hands manfully. So he just he said, look, I ain't got no words for you. I ain't got no conversation. You know what I'm saying? He had his hands out to be bound and he had his tongue out. Y'all going to cut all this shit off anyway. Just go, let's get it over with. It says and says and, and said courageously, these I had from heaven. And for his laws, I despise them. And from him, I hope to receive them again, knowing that he's going to come back. You see? Uh, reincarnation is is, is, is an Israelite belief. You know? You come back in another you come back in another body. You don't come back as another as an animal or, 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 or nothing like that. That's he that's heathen that's heathen talk. You see? Alright. It says, in so much that the king and they that were uh, with him marveled at the young man's courage for they uh, for that he for that he nothing regarded the pains, you know, and they looking like, damn, these dudes, man, what, what the fuck up with these dudes, man? Because, you know, Esau can't take no pain, man. Esau can't take no pain, man. You see, they not strong as we are. So they looking like don't, they got all these ideas and all these torments and all that and ain't none of it working. You see, because faith trumps pain. You see, it says now when this man was dead, also they tormented and mangled the fourth in like manner. So when he was ready to die, he said thus, it is good being put to death by men to look for hope from your power to be raised up again by him. As for thee, thou shalt have no resurrection of life. You know, He's like the Lord going to bring me back and I'm going to be righteous when I come back. What about you? You know, a few choice words on the way out, so to speak. It says, afterward, they brought the fifth also and mangled him. Then looked he unto the king and said, thou hast power over men that are corruptible. Thou doest what thou wilt. Yet think not that our nation is forsaken of the most high. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got the upper hand now. It looked like you winning, Esau. It looked like you winning. You know, either take the chip or die. Eat this pork or die. Well, today's a good day to die. You know? But abide a while and behold his great power, how he will torment thee and thy seed. You're going to pay. You know? You're going to pay for this action, man. It says, after him also they brought the sixth, who being ready to die said, Be not deceived without cause, for we suffer things for ourselves, having sinned against, uh, having sinned against our power. Therefore, marvelous things are done unto us. So he accepted it. You know, we've done wickedness before in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. So obviously I deserve this. But at the end of the day, it's going to be all good, man. It's going to be all good. It says, but think not thou that takest in hand to strive against the Most High, that thou shalt escape unpunished. But the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day, she bear it with a good courage because of the hope that she had in the Lord, man. Can you imagine can you imagine a woman today watching all seven kids get tortured and killed and maimed and all that? She's gonna sell out quick as hell, man. All they're gonna have to do is raise their hand up towards the baby and she's gonna be through. You see? But her faith was worthy of honorable memory, man. This happened what, twenty five hundred years ago? You know? Women don't have faith like that, man. Says, yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, filled with courageous spirits and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach and said unto them, 
I cannot tell how you came into my womb, for I, uh, for I neither, neither gave you breath nor life. Neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you. But doubtless the creator of the world, who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things, will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again. And uh, as ye uh, as ye now regard now, uh, as ye now regard not your own selves for his law's sake. So even the mom, even the mom, it says she uh 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 she it says she with a manly stomach, she comforted her boys, man, and told them she like look, hey, it is what it is, man. But the Lord gonna bring all y'all back to me. I believe that. I truly believe that. So the hell with this devil, man. You know. It says, now Antiochus, thinking himself despised and suspected it to be a reproachful speech, whilst the youngest, uh, whilst the youngest was yet alive, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him oaths that he would make him both a rich and happy man if he would turn from the laws of his fathers, and that also he would take him for his friend and trust him with affairs. Now here it is. This is this this is how this devil is. You gonna kill my whole family right in front of me, and then you give me a job? Come on, man. Come on, man. Really? <laughs> you just killed all my brothers. You just killed all my brothers. Come on, man. It says, but the uh, but when the young man would in no case hearken unto him, the king called his mother and exhorted her. That she should counsel the young man to save his life. So he went to the mom. Look, man, I've already killed all your other sons. If you want, if you want this one to live, man, you better, you better talk to him. <laughs> Verse twenty-six, boy, man, <laughs> this is a beautiful story, man. A beautiful account. Verse twenty-six it says, and when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would. Uh, she promised him that she would counsel her son. But she bowing herself toward him, laughing that cruel tyrant to scorn, spake in her country language on this manner. O my son, have pity upon me that bear thee nine months in my womb and gave thee suck three years and nourished thee and brought thee up unto his uh, unto this age and endured the troubles of, uh, of education. I beseech thee, my son, look upon the heaven and the earth and all that is therein and consider that Yahweh made them. Of things that were not, and so was mankind made likewise. Fear not this tormentor, but being worthy of thy brethren, take thy death that I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brethren. She said, We all gonna be together again, man. We all gonna be together again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. We gonna be together again. So the hell with what this devil talking about, you know. It says, while, while she was yet speaking these words, the young man said, Whom wait ye for? I will not obey the king's commandment, but I will obey the commandment of the laws that was given unto our father by Moses. Given unto our fathers by Moses. And thou hast, uh, and thou that has been the author of uh, all mischief against the Hebrews shall not escape the hands of the Most High. You know? So you can try to force this chip. You can try to force us to eat pork all you want to, man. But that's what I'm saying. You're not going to get away. You're not going to get away. Everybody ain't going to fall to your plan, man. Everybody ain't, that's what I'm saying. The Most High got <clears throat> 7,000 men that didn't buy their knee to Baal, man. Straight up. All right? It says, for we suffer because of our sins. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while for our chastening and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. But thou, O oh godless man, and all of the other most wicked be not lifted up without a cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes, lifting up thy hand against the service of the Most High. So they was talking shit to the king, man. They was like, man, look, just do what you got to do, man. I said, we got way more of a thorough understanding of how this thing worked than you do, man. You through. For thou hast not yet escaped the judgment of the almighty power who seeth all things. For our brethren... Who now have suffered a short pain are dead under God's covenant of everlasting life. But thou, through the judgment of the Most High, shall receive just punishment for thy pride. But I, as my brethren, 
offer up my body and life for the laws of our fathers, beseeching the Most High that he would speedily be merciful unto our nation. You know, it wasn't about them, man. He said, we're willing to take this death so the Lord will have mercy on our nation, man. And that thou by torments and plagues mayest confess that he only is the Most High. And that in me and my brethren, the wrath of the Almighty, which is, uh, <clears throat> which is justly brought upon our nation, may cease. <clears throat> so like <you. clears throat> then uh yeah then the kings being in a rage handed him worse than all the rest and took it grievously that he was mocked so this man died uh so this man died undefiled and put his whole trust in the lord man the fake files man if this if this account don't do nothing for you man you in the wrong business it says, so this man died undefiled and put his whole trust in the Lord. Last of all, after the sons, the mother died. Let this be enough now, that, uh, now to have spoken concerning the idolatrous feasts and the extreme tortures. You know what I'm saying? And that story, man, that story is going to come to that in this time, man. That was Jacob's trouble in that day and time, man. But there's nothing new under the sun, man. And that which is done is that which shall be done, you know. They don't have to force pork on us no more, man. They done already figured out all kind of ways to put that in us, you see. But when it comes to that microchip, man, that's they, that's they, um, that's they, uh, they token of domination over the whole world, man. And the Lord ain't having it, you know. All right, I got one more precept I want to get, and then I'll let you brothers go. We'll go back to Hebrews chapter eleven. All right, Hebrews eleven. All right, let's see. Yeah, this is uh, Hebrews 11 and 32. It says, and what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight. Turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again. You see that? That's why I wanted to bring that out, man. That's why I wanted to bring that story, man. You see? Our people have, a, our forefathers and foremothers had a thorough understanding of the scriptures and they live by those, man. Verse 35, I'm going to read it again. It says, women received their dead raised to life again. And others, uh, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. You know, like I said, that man died undefiled and he died manfully. Those brothers died undefiled and manfully, man, for the sake of the nation to please the Heavenly Father, man. You see? It says, and others had a trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain by the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. Of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good report through faith. These are the faith files, man. And all these, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided them some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect you see what i'm saying man so the promise that the heavenly father made man it's gonna come it's coming you see we just gotta have faith and endure until the end man period point blank you know and with that i want to give all praises to yahweh by hashem yahweh shai by hashem rakakwadash double honors to the apostles and elders at great millstone and peace and blessings to the elect shalom